let's take a look at strike angular range. This is personally one of my favorites and what I think is a, a really powerful metric for runners because um, prior to looking into this, I, I had found this cue and this sort of concept to be rather difficult to convey in a clear way and to be able to uh, grasp as a runner as you're running. And so what we're talking about here with the strike angular range, uh, we can see two positions here. We've got this sort of maximal farthest forward position of the shin and the foot. And then we have the position of the shin and the foot as they touch the ground. Um, this maximal shin and foot angle, if we take the angle of that relative to the ground, we've got the maximal shin and foot angle. We call it the maximal, uh, maximal shin angle, maximal shank angle. Um, it's the farthest forward point in the stride. If we look at the second picture, the ground contact shin and foot angle, uh, we see the shin angle at touchdown. Right, and so the key here is <clears throat> that from this first position to this next position, what's happened is the foot has, uh, has reached a far forward position, sort of what I think of as a loaded position, and it has had a chance to swing back towards the ground before striking the ground. And so why is this important? What are we talking about here? You know, well, first of all, you know, I think of this as the start of the run cycle and sort of the preloading period for force production. What's happening when we get to that far forward position is we're in a loaded position. We're creating tension uh, in the posterior chain and the hips and the hamstrings and the leg. Um, and that is sort of like a, a position of readiness. We're ready to generate power, we're ready to generate velocity. Um, but what we need to be able to do is pull that leg back and be able to initiate that, uh, initiate that cycle before striking the ground. So what happens is a higher range, if we can reach that maximal shin angle and pull it back towards us before hitting the ground, it allows the shin and the foot to reach a higher velocity prior to contact. And this higher velocity results in more force production at contact ultimately, and more energy to send us forward. Um, so, you know, what should we aim for? We should aim for a higher range for more propulsion. Um, if we think about what some elite athletes have done with some real uh, data from the field looks like. One example that I really like is Dennis, uh, Dennis Cometo, when he set the world record for the marathon in 2014. I remember watching this and uh, just a, you know, a really powerful stride. Anybody who's, who's going to run sub 205, you know, even though they may look very light and fast, um, these are very powerful athletes. They're generating a lot of power into the ground and a lot of force for propulsion on every stride to be able to keep up that speed for so long. Um, so they've actually done some measurements on, on when he set that world record. Um, his strike angular range was measured at about uh, eight degrees average for the full race, which is, um, which is quite high for an elite athlete, even for a marathon runner. So, um, you know, if we look at different different uh, types of runners, power runners, um, sprinters, track athletes, marathon runners, sort of more endurance focused people. Um, we can start to train them to create more propulsion and be able to sustain it for whatever their, whatever their uh, race dis distance or duration is.